Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bethany. We're very glad to have you here. I'm sorry here on my little gadget to go over the microphone. It disappeared, so I'm going to put it on there so that we don't have the popping sound that we normally have. Better. Okay. Thank you. Um, two quick announcements this morning. Next Sunday, we are having our community um, drive-through um, supper. Um, we're cooking brats and hot dogs, and we'll have chips and sweet treats. So please um, let your friends, neighbors, and countrymen know to climb through through the, uh, the line. Um, if you have a uh, neighbor or if you yourself would like a delivery made, please let the office know so that we can um, get those ordered and delivered to you. The other item I just want to bring your attention to is you can't miss it. If you drive into our parking lot, you see a big trailer down in the other end of the parking lot. No, we're not building Dick's um, uh, water park yet. Mm -hmm. um, we have given, Bethany has given the um, Moston Youth Football League the permission to uh, park their trailer there for a few weeks while they practice in, in the field down there. We just thought we could utilize that space in a, a positive community gesture, so that's what it's there for. I'd like to thank everybody who was participating in worship this morning, our lector, our singers, um, ushers, and um, our organist. And most of all, we'd like to welcome uh, back to our pulpit, Pastor Brad Lindbergh from Toma. Um, let, let him know how welcome he is here with us this morning. Thank you. And as she said, I am Brad Lindbergh. Um, I am currently on leave from call, uh, living in Toma. I will be a fifth grade teacher this year in at Brookwood uh, Elementary, or now Elementary School, in the Bro Brookwood School District there. Um, my wife is pastor at Peace Lutheran in Toma. So um, it's good to be here with you this morning. Um, and look forward to our time together as we gather together in praise and worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we have come to worship, and so we begin with our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Now let us pray. <laughs> Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we hear the song, 
abide with me. Reading from Joshua chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you would serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve our gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and along all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. 
Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Hi friends, it's Richard with a new song for you. It's about the wind. This song comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, and it's a scene you might remember. It's Jesus meeting with Nicodemus at night. Now Nicodemus was really smart. He was a teacher himself and really uh, educated. And he was looked up to, but he had some serious questions. So he came to Jesus at night and said, what is all this about anyway? Can you help me, please? And in the midst of their conversation, Jesus says this funny thing. He says to Nicodemus, you know, the wind blows wherever it wants to. And you don't know where it came from. And you don't know where it's going. I wonder if Nicodemus was irritated at that answer. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he was relieved. Oh, good. It's like the wind. I don't have to figure out everything in the world. Uh, well, this is a song called The Wind Blows Where It Will. It's about your life and my life. And Christ, your part goes like this. The wind blows where it will. reading from Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord 
in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the violence of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the, <clears throat> in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to push all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, the message may be given to me to make known the boldness of the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. From John. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of the other disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And Jesus said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In Joshua, we heard those familiar words, perhaps familiar 
words, I should say. Um, hopefully they're familiar to many of you. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I suspect it's familiar to many of you because perhaps you have it hanging in your house somewhere or embroidered on a pillow or some other place in the house. It, it, arguably one of the more popular verses to be decorating our houses because it's a wonderful verse. It comes at the end of Joshua's last talk to the people in the book named about him. And it comes towards the end of the big conclusion where, where he gives what we would maybe call a, a uh, <coughs> Old Testament call to discipleship. Where he says, so whom will you serve? There are all kinds of other gods in this world around you. All these different places worship different people, different gods. But whom will you serve? In many ways, a call to us as well. Whom will you serve? When others look at your life and the way that you spend your time, you spend your money, the way that you choose to live your life, who would they say that you serve? Joshua comes back with that beautiful response. Well, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we heard the people's response as well, didn't we? You bet we're on board. Here it is. I, who else are we going to serve? This is it. You have told it, right? I mean, this is one of the great locker room speeches of all time, isn't it? He's got them pumped up, and they're ready to go, and they say, yes, we will serve the Lord. Not just, whom are you going to believe in? Who are you going to like? Which side are you going to take? But whom will you serve? And they said, God, we are all in. We are following him, too. I mean, there's just no other way. Of course, he's the best. He's awesome. This is fantastic. Now, the problem is, while we stopped reading there, and it is a fantastic place to stop because we are left on a high and we're excited, but if we keep reading the Bible, we hear Joshua's response to the people, which is very a very Lutheran theological response well before there were Lutherans anywhere around. And he says, you can't do it. For years, centuries even, theologians have bickered over this sort of theological conundrum of what do we need to do in response to this call to discipleship. Theologians have disagreed. Denominations have split over their understanding of this. Blood has even been shed over this understanding. And we as Lutherans would fall on the end of the spectrum that says, if there is any expectation of we as humans doing anything, if we are expected, you know, no matter how small that gesture is, we as humans are ultimately, at least in terms of salvation, going to come up short. We can't do it. We're going to fail. And so on the heels of this great speech, this high moment we are going to serve the Lord and then Joshua just sort of squashes it with our theology but you can't and it can leave you feeling maybe a little hopeless a little helpless so then what do we do and I don't know all of the answers I will be perfectly honest with you on that 
But I think we get a clue of maybe where it all begins in our gospel reading. When Jesus says, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my wine, I will abide in you and you in me. Now, thankfully, we have 2,000 years of hindsight to be able to look back upon this and understand it, but you can maybe understand a little bit why the disciples that were gathered around listening to this teaching said, this is too hard. Forget it. I am out of here. Because remember, this was before the Last Supper. This was before Jesus' death and resurrection. This was before we had 2,000 years of theologians and pastors and smart Bible study people looking at this going, this is about communion. Right? You can see where the people say, well, if you're calling me to cannibalism, forget it, I am out, right? I mean, this is, this is a tough thing. But thankfully, we do have hindsight. And we do understand that what he's talking about is this beautiful gift of holy, that we call Holy Communion. And if anything... I think we maybe have the opposite problem from the disciples in our story, where it's a little too easy, and we forget the impact and the import importance of this wonderful gift that we have been given. Perhaps some of you have had times in your life where you viewed communion kind of as I did as a, a younger person, as a little mini snack to get you through to the real snacks after worship, right? Just one more hurdle to get through. You'd put up with the kind of styrofoamy wafer and the shot of wine. I mean, it's enough to kind of sustain you until you get to the real cookies and brownies and, and the treats that you really want afterwards, right? And you sometimes wonder, can I have seconds? If you've sinned enough, yes. But no, that, that's a whole other bag of things that I don't want to own. That's not true. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. But it is significant, this gift that we're given, that we share and participate in each and every week as we gather in worship with one another, in worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Oh, this gift eternal life, this gift of abiding in Christ and Christ in us. And it is the power of Christ working in and through us that gives us the ability to say along with Joshua, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. And so that is my prayer for you, brothers and sisters, this day. That as we share in this meal, not only today, but in the weeks to come, you may experience the profound power of this gift that has been given to us. To abide in Christ and Christ in us as we share in the body and the blood of Christ in that sacrament we call Holy Communion. So that as you are called to be disciples of Jesus, you might respond as well. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll invite you to be seated because I think it will be easier to open up your elements. Um, and so at this time, I invite you to receive the bread and the wine. body of Christ with these words. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And the wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. We listen to our sending song, Lift Every Voice.
receive now this blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.